the angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, O Mary, for the grace the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. O Mary, for the grace the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Amen. the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, the grace of the Son of God, Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ the Son was made known by the message of May by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection. In the same Christ, God. This afternoon we're celebrating a memorial mass for the repose of the soul of Nora. Who, whose remains are here in the sanctuary and who died on the 20th of May. And I welcome to the Mass her son, Noel, and her other friends who have come to celebrate the Requiem Mass that should have been celebrated at the time of her death, but we had to delay because of the inevitable. So we can do this act of charity for her now in the Mass together today. Eternal rest grant to her, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves for these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly in my thoughts and in my in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my thought, through my thought, through my most grievous heart. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our Lord. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, Almighty Father, our faith professes that your Son died and rose again. Mercifully grant that through this mystery, your servant Nora, who has fallen asleep in Christ, may rejoice to rise again through him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The virtuous man, though he die before his time, will find rest. Length of days is not what makes age honourable, nor number of years the true measure of life. Understanding, this is man's grey hairs, untarnished life, this is ripe old age. He has sought to please God, so God has loved him. As he was living among sinners, he has been taken up. He has been carried off so that evil may not warp his understanding or treachery seduce his soul. For the fascination of evil throws good things into the shade and the whirlwind of desire corrupts a simple heart. Coming to perfection in so short a time, he achieved long life. His soul being pleasing to the Lord, he has taken up quickly from the wickedness around him. Yet people look on, uncomprehending. It does not enter their heads that grace and mercy await the chosen of the Lord and protection, his holy ones. The word of the Lord. 
If I should walk in the valley of darkness, no evil would I fear, for you are there with me. If I walk in the valley of darkness, no evil would I fear, for you are there with me. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose. Near restful waters he leads me to revive my drooping spirit. If I should walk in the valley of darkness, no evil would I fear, for you are there with me. He guides me along the right path, he is true to his name. If I should walk in the valley of darkness, no evil would I fear. You are there with your crook and your staff, with these you give me comfort. If I should walk in the valley of darkness, no evil would I fear, for you are there with me. You have prepared a banquet for me in the sight of my foes. My head you have anointed with oil. My cup is overflowing. If I should walk in the valley of darkness, no evil would I fear, for you are there with me. Surely goodness and kindness shall follow me all the days of my life. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell for ever and ever. If I should walk in the valley of darkness, no evil would I fear, for you are there with me. Alleluia, alleluia. It is my Father's will, says the Lord, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given to me, and that I should raise it up on the last day. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the crowd, I am the living bread which has come down from heaven. Anyone who eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I shall give is my flesh for the life of the world. Then the Jews started arguing with one another. How can this man give us his flesh to eat, they said. Jesus replied, I tell you most solemnly, if you do not eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you will not have life in you. Anyone who does eat my flesh and drink my blood has eternal life, and I shall raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is real food, and my blood is real drink. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood lives in me, and I live in him. As I who am sent by the living Father myself draw life from the Father, so whoever eats me will draw life from me. This is the bread come down from heaven, not like the bread our ancestors ate. They are dead. But anyone who eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. As I said at the start of Holy Mass today, this is a memorial Mass for the repose of the soul of Nora and I want to welcome to the Mass today her son Noel and the other friends, many of whom were there at the funeral that we had um, some couple of months ago now. Nora died on the 20th of May in St. Martin's home in in the Imperial Avenue. Um, Noel is going to say a few words at the end of Mass today about his mother, but it strikes me that it's an important moment having listened to the gospel reading, to reflect on the importance of what we do when we come to a requiem mass, the importance of what we're doing here this afternoon. Because we are giving thanks to God for a long and faithful life. Nora was 98. And throughout her life, her long life, she was faithful. And I think that's the most important thing that we can say it's the greatest gift that we can hand back to God, that fidelity. But we do it in the certain knowledge that throughout her long life, almost a century, Nora was sustained regularly on Christ the bread of life. And 
as you've heard me say many times before, I'm sure, all those holy communions that we receive in our life are like a seed planted within us that when we die, rise up again to eternal life. And we have the very words, the very promise, the very guarantee of God himself in Jesus that whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. So we live constantly through the Mass, through the Eucharist, in that hope, that anticipation of heaven, expressed beautifully always in those words of St. Thomas Aquinas, which I never tire of reflecting on, when he wrote, O sacred banquet in which Christ is received, the memory of his passion is renewed, the soul is filled with grace, and a pledge of future glory is given to us. And St. Thomas uses that word pledge because it's something much more than a mere promise. A pledge is something which is happening now. So our eternal life through the Eucharist, through our participation in Jesus, the bread of life, is now and in the future. It's now but anticipated. It's now but not yet. And so each time we come to Mass, each time we receive Holy Communion, it increases that anticipation within us, that hope for eternal life. It's something that we want to try to deepen and enkindle more fervently each day. So I ask you today in the Mass, which we're finally able to do for Nora because it was impossible when she died back in May to have the Mass then, I ask you to pray for her. I ask you to pray for Noel. I know he misses his mother terribly. And to pray for all her friends, that uh, those who knew Nora and were touched by her life may be rewarded for their friendship, their affection, their generosity towards her. Let's also pray for ourselves at this time that we may live by faith, that we may live in that anticipation, that assurance that Jesus gives us in eternal life one day. May her soul and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant Nora, we beseech your mercy that she who did not doubt your son to be a loving saviour may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, in him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy heaven, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all who have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognising the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, 
so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Maximilian Kolbe, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Alan, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant, Nora, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom, there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. When you will wipe away every tear from our eyes, for seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. That by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord.
spiritual communion. I wish, Lord, to receive you now with the purity, humility and devotion with which your most holy mother received you and with the spirit and fervour of the saints. the body of Christ.
Let perpetual light shine upon her with your saints forever, for you are merciful. Eternal rest grant to her, O Lord. Let us pray. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body food for the journey, mercifully grant that strengthened by it our sister Nora may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. Let us sit down for a few moments now while Noel addresses a few words to us on behalf of his family and himself. First of all, um, I just want to thank the people that knew mum and have come today. I am, I am my mother's son. Her blood courses through my veins. Her heart beats with mine. Anything that is good about me is a reflection of her. She showed me the love for others is fundamental to our existence. That giving to others is a happiness itself. She taught me the importance of being useful in the community around me. Mum was brought up in a convent and she lived her whole life with those guiding principles of thinking of others rather than herself. Although she was known as Elaine Nora all her life, her name was actually Eleonora. She was a dignified but modest lady. Everybody that was close to her commented on her warm smile. It spoke volumes about her presence. She was a midwife and a health visitor. Overseas. And she worked in paediatrics and became a senior sister at South End General. She lived the last seven years of her life in the Franciscan convents in Braintree, which was truly her second home. We both loved the tranquility and the Catholic environment. My mother died on the 20th of May. I was there alone with her until the very last moment until the end. I told her it was okay for her to go to God if she was ready. I mentioned that her journey was nearly over and it was okay for her to leave me. I know she listened to every word. She held my hand from the first second that I was born on my journey, I held her hand until the last second when she died at the end of her journey. We are now on two sides of a fine gossamer curtain. That's the fine line between my world and my mother's. I wish my mother's cremation would have been more elaborate, but due to the current situation, her mortal remains were carried in a simple coffin-shaped basket with a wreath of flowers. But that epitomizes who she was, a simple person who loved people and people loved her.
with faith in Jesus Christ, we must now reverently bury the remains of our sister Eleonora. Let us pray with confidence to God, in whose sight all creation lives, that he will raise up in holiness and power the mortal remains of our sister and command her soul to be numbered among the blessed. May God grant her merciful judgment, deliverance from death, and pardon of sin. May Christ the Good Shepherd carry her home to be at peace with the Father. May she rejoice forever in the presence of the Eternal King in the company of all the saints. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend the soul of your servant, Laura. In the sure and certain hope that together with Laura will die in Christ, she will rise with him one day on the last day. We give you thanks for all the blessings which you bestowed upon Laura in her life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn towards us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant, and help us to remain, to comfort one another with assurances of faith, until we all meet in Christ, and are with you and our sister forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Eternal rest grant to her, O Lord. May her soul and the souls of all the faithful depart in, through the mercy of God rest in it. And now let us take the mortal remains of our sister to her place of rest. Maybe the immediate friends and family of 